Welcome to some actual gameplay footage of Thea the Awakening. It only took me seven videos to get to the point where most people actually want to see any of these. Take that, YouTube viewer engagement guides. You can see here the difficulty options I am choosing. As is the norm with my guides, I like to play on medium settings. Thea's minimum difficulty is 50% score, and its maximum is 350%, so as far as I am concerned, medium will be right in the middle at 200%. So this works for me. I'm going to choose my villager focus as gatherers, and here we go. As we watch the loading screen, let me be upfront with this. The videos that came before this were scripted, as I wanted to make sure I got all of the instruction manual stuff in to make this guide as comprehensive as possible. But Thea is highly randomized, so for this sample playthrough, I just have some notes sitting next to me of what I want to get done. Or, put another way, I'll be swapping into my semi-commentary style for this. Anyone who doesn't like my voice, good news, you'll have to deal with less of it. Thea is awakened. So, here we are. It's hard to understate just how useful having a good set of resources within your town can be. So I started the game a few times to get this. It's far from the best town I've ever seen, but these resources in range will certainly help out. No shame or judgment here for re-rolling, I promise. You always start with some people in town and some in a wandering group. The thing to do on turn one is have the wandering group step around your town to get vision out to three hexes, as that is the maximum gathering range for the town with a top tier blessed paths. Save one movement point while doing that, though, so that you can then step onto the town and have everyone hop inside of it. Now that everyone is in one group, it's time for turn one maintenance, the optimizing of starting equipment, which means unequipping and re-equipping everyone with whatever starting gear we have available, mostly based on their strength rating. This takes a bit, so I'll do a bit of fast forwarding here. I'll also do a couple renamings. My brother still gets Sorty LaForge, And my other crafter has been taken by Burb. Channel regular Alfred007 wants me to make the starting hunter Hawkeye. Fact checker King Valorian wants a gatherer, so he's in. I have a couple other requests, but I'm going to wait to see who joins my group later for them. Once everyone is geared, I'll recreate the wandering group. I'm going to go with four people to stay at home, one crafter and three gatherers, and everyone else will go out. The wandering group will get most of the food, since the guys at home will be harvesting more themselves, as well as a small batch of fuel and nothing else to minimize their carrying load. The four people staying at home will be my three best gathering gatherers and my best crafting crafter. The guys staying at home will be divided up onto gathering tasks and the crafter will use whatever starting materials we have to make starting items, crafting tools, gathering tools, and maybe some food if there's nothing else to do. The idea is to get those first few research points in as quick as possible, though what path we put the early research into largely depends on available materials, so I need to go find out what those are. 
and at this point, the first couple dozen turns will be spent with me walking around the area near my town while I have daylight visibility to see what I have available, and pitting some early encounters while doing it. A pigeon flies to your village with a note attached. It reads, Dear residents of the lovely settlement, if you will, please visit my humble abode placed not so far from your lovely home. It is very nice. I am a blacksmith of dwarven tradition and I have an offering for you kind people. Yes, there is a small map drawn in strange purple glowing ink. During night, I'll probably choose some place to set up camp and do a night's worth of good. Garvesting? Sure, let's go with that. Anyway, it is time to swap into semi-commentary mode. You stumble across some ruins of an old city, engulfed in mist and mystery. You search the abandoned abodes and open some old dusty cellar. As the heavy doors crack, you are swarmed by some crazed bats. You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. Yes, wonderful. You made your first batch of prepared food. No longer are you a mere scavenger. Now you can cook. Crafted foods are more efficient than the raw stuff, so you may want to take them when you're out exploring, as they are lighter to carry. So now I have a harder task for you. Build me a building in your village. Any building will do. Good luck! Eight wicker and eight gold. That's pretty good. I can combine the wicker with the spider silk at my base, so I think my first research point will be to pick up spider silk harvesting. And that gold can go with my small supply of dark wood for some really nice early game crafting tools.
you stumble across some ruins of an old city, engulfed in mist and mystery. You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. Hidden away in a quiet alcove, you discover a single house amongst ruins of some old town. There is smoke coming from the chimney and the sound of hammering inside. This is clearly a smithy. You notice an unusually large pile of rocks sitting by the house. As you approach, the hammering stops and a dwarf walks out to greet you. That's far enough, strangers. You do not want to anger Chael. She gets very jumpy, that one. The pile of rocks opens its eyes and stares at you. It's definitely a rock troll. Hey, your village, hi. Well, truth be told, I move around me, and I don't like trust any stranger coming to see me. Unless I want you to, you will not find your way here, hence the invite. And this brings me to why you did find me. I have a wee problem, and if you help, I will give you a full set of armor with some good weapons and all. You see, I've got me a kind of, well, a female problem. Ha, ah, well, it's kind of embarrassing. You know, us fallen dwarves, that is, the ones who stayed behind when the darkness came, we tend to be solitary types, at least when it comes to females. After all, no dwarven woman chose this sad fate, at least not one I know of. In any case, the story cut short, there is a cute demon girl, the nice type, mind you, living nearby, and, well, I tried impressing her with my smithing, but she doesn't like weapons. I tried sweet-talking, but turns out it ain't my best feature. So if you go and convince her to go out with me, I will give you the prize. This is a serious matter, mind you. She can get a bit nasty if you're not careful, and I've been trying for decades now. Anyway, I don't know how much you do know of them water demons, but just try not to dance with her. And probably avoid going for a swim, and, well, just be careful. She's a sneaky one. Hey, hold your horses, human. What's with the racism, eh? Just you wait till you see her, then tell me dating demons is off the menu. You know us dwarves, we have good heads for that enchantment shit, so I figure she ain't gonna be dazzle me or anything, and you know, I think we'll get along just fine. Excellent. Here's a map of the local area. I marked roughly the spots where she hangs out, but I think she may be on the move with her sisters, so just, yeah, watch out. The crafting tool came first so that the smith can do everything else faster. But now, on to the baskets. Gathering point for my gatherer, always a plus. Crafting point for a crafter, also great. And two points of damage for a gatherer? Guess I'll be part of my wandering group for a while now. You stumble across some... One of many buildings you tirelessly searched through contains a closed stash. Yikes, I hate to do it, but I think a two-skull fight is just a tad too high for me to take right now. Two darkness curses, not wonderful, but I can deal with that better than a lot of physical wounds. You stumble across some ruins of a... You open one of...
You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. I've got two research points and three different mid-level resource options all really close by. I think I'll go with the elven wood so I can get up some buildings and start trying to attract elves to my group. The dangers of early game fights. I've only got four poorly geared guys here, with one of them now in the danger zone of health, and I don't have any medics yet. Nice two-handed sword though. And looks like I didn't die, but there is still a turn I have to get through. And as long as I'm passing by my town, how about a resupply and rearm stop? Cross my fingers, hit the end turn, and we're good. At this point, I'm going to spend a number of turns grabbing elven wood. How about another quick jaunt into fast forward... Oh jeez, what is that group? Okay, change of plans. My town would not survive if that attacks. I need all hands on deck.
What I'm going for here is what I call a shield sandwich strategy. I'll bring it up in the advanced tactics video after the sample playthrough videos are done. Now, so much for the angry tree friends. Another night falls over Thea, and restless souls of the damned seek out the living in envy and anger. You can almost feel the approaching wave of these infernal wraiths seeking to burden your souls. But this night, a welcomed guest is seen in the shadows, a Lapiduk, the spirit catcher. This bizarre looking creature, resembling an overgrown toad with long claws, yellow warts, and a row of razor sharp teeth, is actually a humble servant of Velez. In the old days, tasked with the hunting of wayward souls and misbehaved wraiths, but now hopelessly overfed and ever busy with his task of devouring evil spirits. Thanks to the Lapiduk, your people sleep well this night and one wakes with greater resolve. It is time for the Night of the Goat, a feast in honor and reverence of the ancestors and forefathers, the so-called Ziadi. You set a table with food and drink, set bonfires in a circle, and begin festivities. But this night, the Ziadi actually appear before you. One, an elder bearded man, speaks with a heavy, coarse voice. You have done us proud, grandchildren. Now we shall cleanse you of any curses you carry. And if your souls are ever burdened by the filth of dark magic, come to a city we once called home and seek us out. And if you prove yourselves worthy, you may be cleansed once more. The Ziadi all nod in agreement, then disappear. Permanent folklore buff for the sage. Very nice. Right, Sorty doesn't have the strength for this. Ah well, time to reform the group. A shame I can't get my gathering up to more than one half of a spider sub bundle per turn with just one person, but I don't need huge quantities of it just yet.
you stumble across, you open one. You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. As you make your way through the thick of the woods, you come across a small clearing. There are signs of a campsite and faint traces of a bloody struggle. Whatever happened here happened some time ago and most likely did not end well for the travelers. Upon deeper inspection, you uncover pieces of a human body still scattered nearby. You are about to move on, thinking it's best to leave a place of such a death, lest the attacker comes back or an angry spirit seeks revenge. But one of the trees by the campsite attracts your attention. The tree is hollowed at its roots, and within it is a bundle, perhaps stashed for safekeeping before the tragedy occurred. Inside the bundle you discover some rags and a small stash of basic supplies which are still usable. And there's my first top tier resource spotted. A small group of travelers passes by your village. You exchange basic supplies and talk. Because of your kindness, they tell you of a herbalist living in a solitary hut out in the wilderness. They say she can cure any poison and even heal wounds, for a price of course. They give you a map to the herbalist's hut and depart on their journey. A three skull physical challenge. Wow. Okay, I think I can pull this off. It's going to be very close, but since this isn't a direct fight, I don't have to worry about lingering wounds. If I win, I get out scot-free. This could be interesting.
Okay, seriously, that's what I got for winning? I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Ah, this event again. I'm in a bit better situation now, and I don't have a guaranteed game event to cure the curse that would come up otherwise. So let's try it. I am definitely going to take a hit here. Strength and Dexterity for a Warrior. Oh, well, that could be worse. And two more Strength for that same Warrior. This guy's getting beefy. Tactics for the Crafter is a bit odd, but I'll take it. And the four guys at town got a reasonable spread of skills. Time to head back to that elven wood and try to harvest it again. Two turns per bundle of food and elven wood, and I'll get the regular wood at just about the same rate that I use it. That's as good as I can arrange this. At this point, I'm going to spend several turns just sitting in camp harvesting while designing my future plans. That makes this a good place to wrap up the first part of this sample starting playthrough. Stay tuned for part two.